Good morning, I'm Simon Loveday, a senior scientist at Ag Research in New Zealand. It's a pleasure to introduce this chapter as part of the special media briefing. Let me just share my screen with you. So the title of the chapter I've written is called Plant Protein Ingredients with Food Functionality Potential, abbreviated here to Plant Protein Innovations. First question is what do proteins do in foods? And one of the well-known functions of proteins is to supply amino acids. But from a food science perspective, some of the other functions are technological roles like creating semi-solid textures in foods such as surimi and tofu and yogurt. Proteins are responsible for some of the roasted and toasted flavors in things like coffee and, and roast beef. And proteins can form membranes that trap gas bubbles and give us interesting foamy textures in foods like uh, bread and the froth on top of your cappuccino. Proteins can also um, package the oil in foods into small droplets called an emulsion. And this is what gives a white color to milk and non-dairy beverages. And some of the sources of proteins in the, in the plant kingdom include the cereals, the legumes, and the oil seeds. And we have some examples here of barley from the cereals, red lentils from the legumes, and hemp seed from the oil seeds. Um, this is not a comprehensive catalog, but it gives you the idea of the, some of the, um, the categories and, and classes within that, um, that plant kingdom. One of the protein-based ingredients that we use a lot in the food industry is called a protein isolate. This is usually a powder that's about 90% protein, so a highly purified form of, of food protein. And protein isolates can give us some of those, those rolls, those, those foams, those gels, and semi-solid textures in food. And here's an example of um, how protein um, isolates can be made. Okay. So starting from a, a flower, which is a, a ground up form of a plant protein, plant material, um, the flower is mixed with water and lye, which is an alkaline water solution. Alkaline extraction goes on. The, the proteins are dissolved into the alkaline solution because they're soluble at alkaline pH. The solid material is then separated from the dissolved proteins. Uh, the solid material can include fiber, oil and starch. The dissolved protein in the lye is then um, uh, precipitated by acidifying and it can be modified in various ways to improve its food functionality and then it's spray dried into a protein isolate powder. This is the probably the most extreme form of protein purification. We can, we can look at more um, lower purity forms such as concentrates which are 70 to 80 percent protein. But this is an example of the type of process we use in the food industry to purify protein for food ingredients. There are some pretty exciting proteins coming along. And here's an example of a, a few of them. Um, sugar beet leaves, alfalfa leaves, um, algae, seaweed, lupins, pulses. And they're not all the same. They're, they're all different because the structure of the plant material from which the protein is extracted differs. And here's a graph of the yield of protein. So the amount of protein extracted relative to the total amount versus protein purity. So this is the, the um, how much of the extract is protein in percentage terms. And you can see there's a trade-off. So generally as, as, um, as purity is increased, yield is decreased. So we lose some protein as we uh, purify more extremely. Conversely, if you are aiming for maximal yield, the purity of the material you're extracting tends to be lower. Each of these dots represents a, a study in which um, protein has been isolated from a plant source and plotting the yield and the purity from that study. And this is a compilation of many different studies published in Trends in Food Science and Technology a couple of years ago. The other thing to notice from this graph is that there's a, there are two, two groups, if you like, the, the green and the non-green. And they have very different characteristics of purity versus yield. 
um, the green materials or the green dots are, are materials from, from leaves uh, and um, complex plant structures. And they are a lot harder to purify. We tend to get lower purity and lower yield compared to the, the, the grains and the, uh, the seeds, which give us um, a really nice readily packaged form of protein that we can access for food science um, functionalities. So there's a whole lot of proteins that scientists have looked at in the lab, extracted protein from and characterized that protein. But that's quite different from a, a food ingredient that uh, you can buy off the shelf and the industry can use. And some of the things, some of the criteria that a protein has to meet in order to become a food ingredient, so it's a transition from the lab to the industry and, and become a real product. They need to be safe. They need to be legal in the, in the jurisdiction in which a food manufacturer is interested. They need to be cost effective in terms of the process of, of refining or extracting protein. And we looked at that protein isolate process. They need to be consistently high quality. So as we know, um, plant materials vary through the season. They vary with year to year. They vary with geographical location and, and soil types and so on. And so we need to be able to provide consistently high quality and consistent availability throughout the year uh, for these proteins to become um, feasible, if you like, for use in the food industry. One of the questions people sometimes ask is, can't we just replace all the animal proteins with plant proteins? Um, and the answer is complicated because plant proteins and animal proteins tend to have quite different characteristics. Um, as an example, I've chosen milk protein here and uh, suggested whey protein isolate as a, a purified form of milk protein to compare with a, a plant protein isolate generated through that process we discussed a few slides ago. You might know that the, the, the proteins and animal, pro the, the animal proteins tend to be complete in amino acids. They provide a, a good mixture of the essential amino acids. Uh, plant proteins tend to be lacking one or two of those amino acids. What you may not have come across before is that um, plant proteins are often difficult to dissolve. They tend to be very insoluble and that makes it a bit harder to use them in things like gels and foams to get that tofu texture or that cappuccino froth. Um, milk proteins are pretty soluble. And plant proteins are often difficult to purify. So that isolate process is, is time consuming and expensive and also resource intensive. If we look at the, the water and the hexane use used to to manufacture um, milk proteins versus a plant protein isolate. Uh, we have about 10 kilograms of water to manufacture one kilogram of milk powder, which is about 34% protein. If we divide up to a protein basis, that's about 30 kilograms of water per kilogram of protein in a milk powder. No hexane, and you'll see why that's there. Um, from a lupin protein isolate, which is an oil seed, um, that's using a lot more water and it's using hexane to extract the oil from that, uh, that seed. And the, the critical comparison here is these per kilogram uh, resource intensity figures. So 30 kilograms of water for a milk powder per kilogram of protein compared with 105 kilograms of water and 27 kilograms of hexane to produce one kilogram of uh, plant protein. So uh, th th there's a real, um, and this is a simplification. It's, it's difficult to compare studies that use different methodologies to evaluate resource intensity. But I'm just raising a question that we need to consider the resource use uh, being much higher in the purification of plant proteins compared to animal proteins. So that's all I have to say for now. Um, please have a read of the chapter, Plant Protein Ingredients with Food Functionality Potential. It's been a pleasure to join you as part of this media briefing. And please feel free to contact me if you have any questions or would like to discuss the, uh, the content of the chapter. Thanks very much.